Today on Toy Geeks, we're going to recap day two of Hasbro PulseCon, including the new reveals from G.I. Joe, Transformers, Ghostbusters, and Power Rangers. All that and more today on Toy Geeks. Hey everybody, and welcome to Toy Geeks, the live day two post-con recap Hasbro PulseCon version edition of the show. My name is Jay, and with me as always is John. John, how you doing tonight? Good, good, good. It's different to be on a Saturday night. It is. Our usually scheduled time is on Sundays at 9 o'clock, but uh, the past two days we had a Friday and a Saturday night. Um so uh, hopefully it, uh, it creates a good vibe uh, this Saturday night, uh, but <laughs> maybe maybe better than what we got from Hasbro today. But you know, not going to be too negative. I feel like we were we we're banging on them pretty bad yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so going to try and be positive, even though they're making our work a little bit harder for us today. I feel like we still have probably some bones to pick today. But there was some good stuff as well. So excited to talk about day two of Hasbro PulseCon, their big day. Uh, started even earlier than I thought it was going to start. I thought it was like 10.35. It was actually 10 o'clock. So I missed the very beginning of the G.I. Joe panel. Uh, but yeah, so G.I. Joe, Transformers, uh, Zoids. Uh, is that what they're called? Zoids? Yep. Zoids. Uh, Ghostbusters, Power Rangers, Fallout Boy, Tenacious D, John Cena. It was a really stacked day. A lot of content in the day and uh excited to talk about it with all of you today and especially you john uh my my dearest of toy friends um <laughs> so uh let's see who we got in the chat already uh let's see we got ghost trooper 0715 i'm so disappointed the ghostbuster reveals today i hope they can do better in the future you and me both go through. Yep. I got some bones to pick when you get to the Ghostbuster section. Uh, Lolo, Pat, we've been scammed. <laughs> um, I, I feel you, Lolo. I do. Uh, Joe Vay, boo. boo. I, you were I, saying that a lot today. <laughs> Sean and I, between the decks, like, ow. <laughs> uh, pass us hello uh 10 e 23 a tool yay, yay, yay all right well there you go there's some positive there nice uh nightmare 10 880 good evening guys good evening there, good to see you good to see you and uh 10 uh 8 uh, e 23 a tool it's good morning uh good so morning got somebody on the other side of the pond where uh, are you let us know yeah exactly where, where, where in the world is Carmen San Diego. Yeah. 10 and 23 a tool. Um <laughs> Adam Hedberg preferred PowerCon. Uh not gonna lie, I feel like PowerCon had a better punch. It, yeah. like, it exceeded expectations versus this one did not ex in terms of the reveals, didn't exceed expectations. Uh for me, <laughs> unknown, unknown. Uh ghost <laughs> popper. Ghost popper. <laughs> Uh, woof. <laughs> oh man uh pd doves no ecto glow i know i know um like so much so much even like i was like well guys is the bug guy ghost i think i was even telling you that i was like yep like, talking about the bug guy ghost they're, they're gonna do the ghost nope <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> tree shaker the transformers kingdom reveals were amazing uh, yeah, the Transformers stuff looked fantastic. And yeah, it the, really did. The Peter Cullen, uh, Frank Welker panel, I don't know if you watched that, Sean, was fantastic. It was really, really good. That I that I had to miss out on. Oh, man, it was it was really good. Great to hear those two just talking about those characters here. Peter Cullen doing the Optimus Prime voice, which is it, it's amazing. Um, and he did this, like, inspiring speech at the end of the panel, like, basically saying you know 2020 sucks we can all band together or whatever it was like optimus prime giving us a pep speech on 2020 <laughs> it was amazing it was really really cool really really cool i'll have to go back um, and check it out yeah it uh it was awesome it was awesome p-dubs new joes look great though uh yeah the classified stuff that they did reveal today um does look fantastic so uh, a lot of things to talk about a lot of uh, brands and and uh ip to talk and get through today so uh we will be doing that very shortly just a couple housekeeping things if you missed yesterday's episode go check it out we talk about the star wars and marvel reveals uh, but we also drop that our next episode on our regularly scheduled night of sunday at 9 p.m we'll have our first special guest on toy geeks none other than toy guru himself 
Scott Knightlick will be on the program and uh, we'll absolutely want to pick his brains uh, about Hasbro PulseCon or Hasbro Pulse in general because it's kind of Hasbro's version of what he created on Mattel with Maddie Collector, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Motu Origins. I mean, uh, Masters of the Universe is back in a big way, and uh, really he kept it alive in between 2000X and uh, what they're doing yeah. currently. So absolutely, uh, among many things, uh, excited to have him on the show and to hear his thoughts now uh while i have a lot to uh, bones to pick today about the ghostbuster stuff you know what made it go down a little bit easier was getting to play with this thing today and uh i, I have a full review coming but this thing is freaking awesome uh it's better than the maddie collector uh the, the wand this egon's neutrino wand is fantastic like the uh all the all the lights were oh, wow. um and then this works better it works more like the original one um and then what i love about it if you've played the video game it actually switches uh blasters like it did in the video game so it goes to slime mode in green uh and then it goes into like the uh frozen darts in blue and then it also does boson darts like it's oh. freaking awesome so why didn't they tell us that during the panel while they right? were playing with them uh like so freaking cool um, you can you can increase and lower the velocity of the blast. Um, it's just it's cool on so many levels. Uh, so this thing is amazing. It made it even more of a bummer that we didn't get like a ghost trap or something like that, because they, they really knocked this thing out of the park. Uh, but definitely be on the lookout for my full review. Uh, probably on Monday, I'll probably finish up editing and everything like that. But this thing is incredible. It has the hook. It has the thing already attached to your proton pack. And it has an adapter on the back end if you want to attach it to a hose to your existing proton pack. Or maybe eventually they'll make a, a proton mm -hmm. pack. But this thing is freaking cool. Really, really cool. So I definitely wanted to say something positive about uh, <laughs> Hasbro. <laughs> before we get to the game today. All right. Uh, any, anything else, John, before, before we dive into things here? Nope. We just nope. got to get into it. We, we just, just got to be <laughs> first. <laughs> don't even don't even check the temperature. Just jump in. You're right. You're right. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So uh, first up was G.I. Joe. Now, I thought it was 1035. So I missed the very beginning, uh, which apparently was all the stuff I really cared about with G.I. Joe, which was the classified series. Um, now, I believe a lot of this was already leaked. Like none of this was like new, new. Right. Because I, I think right. the Artan uh, uh, a Cobra Viper um, Firefly was already leaked. If I'm not yeah, right. it's been it, it's been traveling around the the interwebs for for a while now, you know, and and they actually addressed that you know during the panels all the they stuff did. that had been leaked, you mm -hmm. know. I think each one they said like, how great is that we get to reveal it or whatever. Yeah. Um, but they look great. The figures look fantastic. Uh, this I mean just. Again, what they're doing with this line, the detail, the attention, the detail mm -hmm. is just fantastic. Um, and it's already sold out, which is a bummer. I was I this was one I did pick up today. Um, I picked up this one and the other Hasbro Pulse, uh, uh, which is not an exclusive. I think it'll be a normal retail release with yep. the um, Cobra Infantry, which is essentially the same as a Cobra Trooper, just missing a lot of the extra accessories that the target exclusive Cobra uh, Trooper came with, um, which I'll pull that one up right now as well. Uh, so it doesn't have the little goggles. It doesn't have as many of the weapons and stuff like that. Uh, but still, um, kind of a bummer. It wasn't a two-pack like we were kind of predicting. I think yeah. the, it, we were definitely feeling like we'd get a multi-pack, um, but that was not the case. Uh, but still, um, cool that that we got that um and then we also had two more classified figures uh that were unveiled that were probably i mean zartan's really cool uh but really probably this will be the most popular army builder right the co the cobra fight yeah. Um, yeah absolutely yeah no doubt that this one will be the biggest and it is none other than a <laughs> Then a Target exclusive. I have a new button for this one. No! <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, Why? man. Why uh, do they do this to us? I know, right? Oh, such a bummer. Um, 
I mean, I guess it just it is what it is. Not much we can do about it. Uh, but yeah, so it is a Target exclusive for uh, that set, which is a big bummer. But um, yeah, they look great. They look fantastic. Uh, but they sold out in seconds on the, the Target website. So the, the bot yep. got to them uh, almost instantaneously. The same was true for the other Target exclusive today, the Ecto-1. Uh, like I, I, again, 5 o'clock hit, so I was kind of trying to do the Hasbro Pulse stuff and the Target stuff and the Walmart stuff with the Ghost Popper. So I was trying to go through all of them, uh, whiffed on these instantly, whiffed on the Ecto-1. So the Target stuff was an absolute bust. Thankfully, I was able to get through the Hasbro Pulse stuff. Um uh, and the the ecto popper I was able to get as well, but mm -hmm. so again, this stuff looks great. It's just it's a it's frustrating. It's another target exclusive. Yeah, they just got to stop with the exclusives altogether. Just Can't make it available to Big Bad Toy Store, it. Entertainment Earth. I get it, but they know we hate it. Yeah, it's it's no secret. You yeah. know, if, if, if Hasbro, if, you know, if the marketing team is paying attention enough to realize that the, the pictures are leaking early and in, in reading comments, they're obviously reading the comments of how bad the target distribution is yeah. and, you know, allowing the bots just to get in there and buy out the entire stock in, in seconds. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and really no human being is uh, can stack book like books like this. Right. A human being can buy uh, exclusives on target.com. Uh, it's kind of unreal. I mean, honestly, I thought I had time with the Ecto one um, because to be honest, it wasn't, I, I don't think it was anything that was that crazy or game right. changing. It's a one eighteenth scale Ecto one. So it's not even in six inch scale and it sold and, out in like two minutes. Yeah. And it's not like it's something you're going to army build. Like, how many do you think you can, they'll actually sell? You know, yeah. I didn't. I didn't expect dealers or bots or you know resellers to go in there and just buy mass quantities. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which that one kind of blew my mind. It absolutely. Mm -hmm. did. Uh, this one, no shocker that it went instantaneously, and it's going to be another pain in the neck to find this figure. And you know, luckily, uh, I spent like a week going to Target every single day and was able to find uh, everything uh, that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I was able to get you and Gary uh, a Baroness as well, um, which you guys still need to pick up. It's still in my closet over here. Uh, <laughs> there, safe and sound. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it, it is frustrating. And honestly, if they were paying attention to the YouTube page, like the no target was like nonstop mm -hmm. the rest yep. of, the, of the panel, uh, which was <laughs> which was uh, very interesting to say the least. Um all right, well, let's go to the rest of what a G.I. Joe had the offer. Um, and this is, you know, once I came in. But uh, we have more of these kind of vintage uh, figures. Mm -hmm. The retro series. So can I be honest, though, when they were playing this stuff with the Sky Striker, I was like, oh, my God, they're going to make a Sky Striker. No. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. But these are all the same figures that we've seen mm -hmm. over the past two weeks. These are nothing new. Yep. Yep. Um. So, uh, meh. cool. That's pretty neat. I think I really do think that it's 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 split between six inch and three and three quarter inch collectors, four inch collectors. You know, I think there's equal numbers of each to justify mm -hmm. making these. Yeah, I mean, but I think you even said it. These things are kind of peg warming right now. Like they're not mm -hmm. the demand yeah. not that high for them. Um, you, so, you can look on eBay and get them for retail right now. Yeah. Um, and then the vehicle reveal, it's like, okay, it's a tiny little vehicle. Cool. Yeah. I mean, fangs are cool. It's, yeah. it's a, it looks like it's almost a complete redesign. The roll cage yeah. is different. It's not a, it's not an, a separate red roll cage. That's prone yeah. to breaking so super easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks a little short when they showed the package. Uh, if you did a close up on that, the, the figure's knees are above yeah. <laughs> like where the front there, is yeah. so it looks like the figure is actually too big for it yeah <laughs> um also this guy i don't know he seemed he seemed a little out of it uh during the program everybody else <laughs> but yeah i mean it was it was all right uh this little thing was cool this tribute mm -hmm. artist but again we couldn't get a less grainy picture okay i'm not gonna i'm, I'm done nitpicking but it was a really sweet little uh thing <laughs> Um, but again, another bummer here is that we had um, uh, Henry Golding, right? The, the actor yep. who plays uh, Snake Eyes came on, 
Um, and I thought he was going to be introducing a clip to like something from Snake Eyes, like show us an exclusive clip uh, yeah. that we didn't get any clips from Snake Eyes either. So I, I was kind of bummed. I was hoping maybe a trailer or, or even like a teaser trailer. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm kind of shocked they didn't have something like that. Uh, I mean, he even says in this little clip that they've already filmed uh, the entire movie. It's already done. Yep. So give us a little teaser, man. Give us a little, ta little taste. They got to um, save that for the Super Bowl. I guess, but like, mm -hmm. what is why have a convention if you're not going to like give us exclusive little bits? Now, usually at like San Diego Comic Con or whatever, they'll show these types of clips, but then they'll say nobody video record or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to get out. Um, and this is being streamed online. And as you can see, I am sharing it right now. Like, it's nothing to, right. to kind of capture that footage. Uh, but still, I think it was uh, kind of fun. We didn't get to see any of that, but or even pictures, or you know, at um, at DC fandom, they even though they didn't even have footage yet, they showed us like concept art and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I would say Hasbro, like, what, why are you holding back? Just give it to us. Let let us see it. Um, yeah, I mean, show us some green screen fights. Just yeah. anything. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're fans. Like, we're gonna love it no matter what. It doesn't have to be you know, uh, perfect. We just want to see something, even just pictures. I'm mean, whatever. Mm -hmm. Act it out like with little, little action figures. <laughs> so this is what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So uh, that's that. Um, the Zoids. What was your I I don't know Zoids at all. <laughs> um, I, I remember it from when, you know, they came back out in the early 90s like mm -hmm. maybe like 93 94 yeah um and they were pretty cool they were technozoids mm -hmm. and they were a lot bigger than what they're making now but they were all just you, stuff that was brought over from japan and rebranded um it looks like they're just kind of going with the same idea of what's you know they're interpreting the the cartoons and stuff yeah um to the u.s market mm -hmm. um outside of that i mean they're cool to build you know they're they're just model kits to me. Really. Yeah, pretty much. And they kind of, they went through that and they kind of are interactive and you can fight them against each other and stuff like that. Yep. Kind of cool. Um, and a uh, uh, friend of the show, a friend of mine, Axel Foley. Uh, these are also models and they're pretty popular. Uh, so there's that. So again, they have, they have their following. Um, it's just not for me, but they have one called like, mm -hmm. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's mostly that's like the most popular one. There's there's a lot oh, really? of different okay. Liger versions. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's their Snake Eyes. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Different decos and colors. Yep. Yep. Um, and uh, going to the 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 chat box here, Axe Foley. If they do a Larry Hama comic Snake Eyes story, it would be awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree. Again, anything, just give us something. Give us something to look at. Um. In uh, Nightmare Ten Eight Eight Zero, I was really hoping that thing was going to be classified. It's yeah. small enough, like that's a good like tr like start out classified one because it's a lot smaller. Um, but uh, seeing how the uh, figure fits in there, it might be too small even for the uh, for, the <laughs> for, for the retro figure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was honestly expecting at least a cl one classified vehicle, like we had talked about. You know, one in our, mm -hmm. in our predictions. Yep. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Uh, let's see. Hardline Soul, the pain in the butt exclusive. Yeah, totally. Totally. Uh, Lolo Pat. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, I got that one too. <laughs> Back from Bone. Ready to go at all times. Uh, but I do like now for the uh, exclusives, uh, no Vader. No! <laughs> That's how I feel. That's how I feel. Someone just told me, pad me. I was dead. I'm by my own hands. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. And then Unknown Unknown is in Kenner Ghost Rider interview. They showed a video of a guy doing a Slammer Wax model. That's the Kenner Slammer Fright feature. If I'm not mistaken, will it get a re-release? Well, let's let's say that for the Ghostbuster section, we will look at that video. I definitely have some thoughts about it. I'm sure John does as well. As a you know figure sculptor yourself, John, I'm, I'm sure you have some perspective uh, mm -hmm. to there as well um but final thoughts here on gi joe john what do you got um distribution aside i i really liked everything you know mm -hmm. and when this line got launched and 
a lot of people were sort of on the fence. Like, is this going to make it because they weren't really sold on the the style? It wasn't yeah. straight vintage or cartoon. Yep. It was a new take on it. A lot of mixed reactions, but it seems like it's, it's doing gangbusters. You know, you can't yeah. find those figures anywhere. Yep. And what they're continuing, you know, adding so many villains and Cobras mm -hmm. in there, I think it's, it's really going to stretch it out a little bit better. Um, because when I look at my display case and I got Cobra and Destro, Cobra Commander mm -hmm. and Destro, yep. I don't have any troopers, but I have six other Joes. Yeah. You know, it's going to balance things out a little bit better. Um, so yeah. they're, I think they're going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Um, but distribution, that's what they got to work on. Exactly. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, and again, I get needing a target exclusive, but does target care what exclusive you give them? keep the viper for a hasbro pulse man like you could just yeah. keep making those things and keep selling those things mm -hmm. it, it could be an evergreen figure like just sure. constantly for sale yeah and you would keep selling them mm -hmm. um so yeah i agree i everything they've released so far looks fantastic um the sculpting's amazing the articulation is great and if you haven't gotten one of these gi joe classified figures in hand yet um, it'll make you a fan, uh, and it'll make you want to pick them up. I think PD Dubs is a great example. Is was not even a GI Joe fan in general, and 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 is all in on the GI Joe classified line. And for me, love GI Joe as a kid. I have a bunch of the vintage figures, but I wasn't like, oh my god, clamoring for GI Joe figures. But again, once I got them, and I was like, these are amazing toys, mm -hmm. amazing action figures, and I need to pick them up. And it's it was cool to see what they showed here. Really digging it, but I'm totally with you, John enough with the target exclusives or or give target the crap that nobody will want like just the pig warmers right yeah yeah if, exactly if you have to court target and make them happy give them the things that aren't as like don't do army <laughs> builders just right doing the army builders um, they should just get they should just get repaints yeah and, and let the the first release stuff out to the masses mm-hmm yep um and again, they have to be paying attention because uh, once they said target, that the rest of that GI Joe thing, oh. was like, no target, no target. It was a crap fest. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> um, Nightmare ten uh, eight eight zero. I'm surprised that Zartan didn't come with the chameleon. Seemed like that would be a perfect choice. I think we said that in our predictions episode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a perfect, uh, you know, first vehicle as a small kind of add on vehicle, make it a deluxe figure, you know, put it at 50 bucks, you know, because if, if uh, Baroness comes with that motorcycle, I think the chameleon definitely is within that range of small vehicle. Yeah, um, that would be a great Hasbro Pulse exclusive. Um, and again, I think if this is a Hasbro Pulse con, uh, you should have more Hasbro Pulse figures. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Perfect. But don't forget, everyone, New York Comic Con is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And that's that's always full of reveals, too. You know, even if we only get, you know, three or four reveals, that's only that's less than a month away. True. True. But they didn't do anything at San Diego Comic Con. So you feel I felt like, OK, this is what they're going to do at San Diego. Mm -hmm. at, uh at new york toy fair but we'll see maybe they still will yeah i got a feeling we'll be in for something some some sort of surprise we'll see hopefully fingers crossed fingers crossed that will be the case all right uh going to the chat uh oh i missed sartan oh you did uh axel foley head on over to hasbropulse.com and peep game at uh, that zartan figure it looks fantastic unfortunately it's already sold out um but hopefully they put more back on my uh, big bad toy store Oh yeah, Big Bad Toy Store and Entertainment Earth. So yep. there are other options, unlike the <laughs> the Viper and the uh, Firefly. <laughs> um, <laughs> Brad Brooks. Now they know, and knowing is half the battle. If they didn't <laughs> know before, I I would hope they know now. Uh, but uh, Lil Lil Pat feels like Hasbro is greedy. See, I don't feel like they're greedy. Like they're a business. They got to make these deals. There's only Target and Walmart left. We don't have Toys R Us, and mm -hmm. Target and Walmart don't really care about toy collectors or toy sales. Just we're not, a, we're probably a microcosm of a blip in their business. So they don't care about us. Um, so it's just kind of the state that we're in right now without a Toys R Us in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. but I feel like Big Bad Entertainment Earth, like there are things in the ecosystem that could fill in Toys R Us's place. 
Um, may, n- nothing ever could, but there's stuff there that could fill in that void that could maybe take away this excess of Target and Walmart exclusives. Um, and I think someone said it really well on Instagram. I saw is just a picture of Jingle All the Way. And they said, like, why does it feel like every toy figure that was released yeah. felt like chasing the Turbo, Turbo Man? Because mm-hmm. uh, it kind of has been. It's like every, everything's been a fight to try and find these toys. Um, don't know if it's because everybody's at home and, you know, can do that kind of stuff or what. But it's uh, it's uh, been Christmas all summer long. Pretty much. Uh Axel says, just looked at it. Awesome. Got to go on the hunt. Thanks, guys. Again, yeah, uh, B- Big Bad Toy Store and Entertainment Earth looks like uh, they're there. Uh, Garage Gamer, the Ecto-1 is already sold out. Yeah. Uh, you didn't miss it by, like, it was two minutes. I was literally trying to pull it up and load it, and it was already gone. The bots. It's the bots. But here's the thing with that one. I got a really strong feeling that's going to be around a target. I don't mm-hmm. think it's going to be that hard to find. I-, I really feel like once they hit retail, we're going to be yeah. able to find those. Um, and when the movie comes out, they have to have yeah. they they got to replenish the merchandise for mm-hmm. the release of the movie. Exactly, exactly. Like even like look at the other plasma series figures. Those first few waves that are that hit retail went really quick, but mm-hmm. they keep replenishing them. They're like really yeah. well stocked because, to your point, John, they're promoting a movie, so that's part of the promotion vehicle. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be out there for sure. For sure. and, and speaking of yesterday, I went to uh, Walmart maybe an hour um, from my house. Yeah. And they had the entire plasma series except mm-hmm. for Winston and multiples of everything except not even a single Winston. And I haven't bought any yet. Yeah. And I figured, well, I'm going to get everything right now. But they didn't have him. And I just got turned off from buy- buying them all together because I, I don't want to be that. You know, that's the one I need to find, you know, and I'm going to have to h- get on eBay. John, if you need a Winston, I got a spare. I got a spare too around here. Do you? Yeah. With with the with the yeah. uh the build a figure piece? Yeah, I got it right. I'm looking at it. Hold on. Oh, maybe I'll go back to Walmart tomorrow. There, look at see. I got a spare. Oh. Right there. Yep. I should have asked while I was at I should have texted you while I was at Walmart. Come on. Do you not know me? I think I have like a gross have, of them. <laughs> I uh well because I, I bought another one. Because I was like, well, let me get another one because of the stream. Maybe I'll have a couple extra streams. But now I was just like, I don't really need this. But I, I, as a collector, let me just do this out there where you like, you get something. I'm like, why am I this way? <laughs> but yeah, it's if if you do want to get, a, I got a Winston here for you. Okay, all right, good to know. Because um, because they're they're clearance at Walmart already. Oh really? Oh dang. Yeah, they're fourteen bucks. Um. Yeah. So not only do I have that Winston, but I also from our friend. Uh, uh, James who sells um, wholesale kind of um, I have a shipper box of plasma series still sealed in the shipper box. And I just put that one away. That's just, which is going in the archives. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, <laughs> you definitely should have asked Jay, John. I know. Sorry, Lewis. I, I blew it. Uh, what a <laughs> hardline soul. LOL. See hardline gets it. Hardline. <laughs> um, uh, uh, keep talking, John. Keep talking. Go oh, ahead. okay. Um, yeah, I was I was super on the fence, but once I seen them, I just I just made the decision. I'm gonna buy them. And as I was going through the pegs, and yeah. it's like Ray, 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 Peter, 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 mm-hmm. and then I, I I kept stacking them down in front of me, and then all of a sudden, there's none. So then I just you know shamefully left them there uh-huh. <laughs> on the shelf. <laughs> because <laughs> you get you get kind of ticked off you know i, I get it like, i totally get it and that's the problem with putting in an accessory like that neutrona beam in just mm-hmm. one then it's going to be like that's the one that people pick off and it's only one per case um so it doesn't make it tougher. all right so last night uh we we joked a lot about you know the placing the hand behind the figure and i think you oh, just yeah. uh we needed a, a big styrofoam hand from a from a baseball game yeah uh, well uh exclusive to toy geeks uh, we've got the foam finger uh, to put the finger behind. So, now, this is in green, so we can actually green screen this eventually right. uh, to put the finger right. uh, in front of. So there you go. Take that. After we're stepping up the game. I, I got one of the um, the giant uh, purple 
<laughs> Skeletor swords, the foam ones oh, that yeah, yeah. Seven did from uh, Comic Con yep. yep. a while back. <laughs> oh man! All right. Uh, all music fans says the Mattel streams are better. They are honestly the Mattel streams are better, and they fit on the Plasma series figures. So, little uh, tidbit of info out there: if you have uh, spares left over from the Maddie Collector Ghostbusters, those do fit on the Plasma series. All right, let's go into Transformers. You ready, John? I am. All right, let's uh, let's do it here. Uh, I believe it's this one. Yep. Okay. So Transformers started out with a lot about the TV show, which like honestly took forever. Kind of bored me. It, to it did. Maybe if you cared about this, it was really cool. But the show was fantastic. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all the hype that they're talking about and everything they put into it. It absolutely shows. Yeah. It's it was really really good. I can't wait for the the second part. So is it this kingdom uh, uh, war for Cybertron? Is that the next thing or? Yep. Yeah. So war for Cybertron is like the, you know, the main title. And so kingdom will be the subtitle okay. um, for the next round. And that'll be the addition of the beast wars characters. Yep. Yep. Um, and they look amazing. I mean, this is kind of a big deal. Is this the first time we've gotten beast wars characters? Sent. Um, uh, no, they've been they've been thrown in throughout um, Transformers Univor universe and yeah. Universe 2.0. They did an anniversary mm -hmm. um, Beast Wars where they did a, a build a figure of the Transmutate. Yeah. Um, so they've trickled in here and there. Yeah. You know the, the main um, popular characters, mm -hmm. but this this is like the first um, edition, as far as I I know, where there'll be a combined media. Mm -hmm. Um you know, where it's not just like thrown in there where like there's a cheetor in, in universe or um, like say they put in an armada. Like, I don't think it ever appeared in that cartoon. Yeah. But I think this will be the first time where cheetor appears in the same media cartoon mm -hmm. as, you know, cup or optimus or me yeah. like regular, like G one styles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I dig it. Like I always dug that when God, i remember watching it back back in the day when it was like revealed and i don't remember exactly but i think it was revealed that it was actually a continuation of g1 right like i feel like uh, uh sort of right it was kind of like a weird thing um that it connected to it um uh, in some way if i remember correctly but anyway uh for those that are fans of beast wars you know it's such a integral part of the 90s transformers uh era really probably the biggest uh transformers medium in the 90s was beast wars um so i think for a lot of those kids that are now in their 20s and pushing well i guess some of them are now it's starting to it's nine, yeah 1990 they're starting to turn 30 um so yeah so i think uh for those collectors out there i think uh this is a, a good chunk of nostalgia for them which is cool mm -hmm. uh, yeah they, they look really great you know the mm -hmm. the the beast version the beast mode i think looks <laughs> looks a lot better than the robot mode actually you mm -hmm. know they and they had mentioned how they actually worked with companies that make beast and animal creatures like um you know slice or the the german companies that you see mm -hmm. at walmart and things like yeah. that yep um, where they went and helped had help from those companies to design you know like more anatomically anatomically correct animals mm-hmm um and yeah i just i i do think they look really cool so for those fa i i'm probably gonna pass like if anything i dug the uh, megatron like the t-rex megatron mm -hmm. um and the uh what do they call the optimus prime that's the ape optimus primal, primal. optimus primal thank you um those look pretty cool but again as a collector on a budget in which i already had to buy a bunch of other things today i, I pass for right now but maybe i'll see them in the future and and pick them up uh but yeah yeah this this megatron is cool af i mean anytime there's a di like a t-rex it's just gonna be cool like you're gonna, yeah but it yeah. looks fantastic yeah and like you those are my two favorites as well if i found them at like a toy show loose for yep. a good price I'd, I'd probably pick them up for myself yep same that's that's the benefit of doing toy shows and stuff like that. It's like, if I find them, that's where I'll get them. Maybe less than retail if I can find it. Maybe they clearanced or something. 
yeah uh, and i'm all over it but yeah the megatron just looks fantastic really really digging that one um we're gonna pause there just for a second go into the chat uh ross doesn't like him huge pass on beast wars hey listen it's not it's geek is a lot a lot of stuff a lot of stuff out there <laughs> um nightmare uh 108880 says uh cheetor was in the recent transformer cyber series that aaron carter network and hasbro's oh, okay there you go uh luis uh rivera says i don't collect transformers but i think this is cool um yeah i just think i think it is cool i i, I think there's just something perennial perennial perennially perennially uh cool about that um this Optimus is cool, I guess. Yeah, there's this new core class that they're, that they're aiming at. Um, you know, more affordable for, for kids. Yeah. Um, a $10 price point. And, you know, it's neat. It's it's something to get out there um, that still transforms. Mm -hmm. You know, because they're doing that new uh, Red Series, R-E-D, yeah. where they're just like action figures right, that don't transform. I pre-order those on Walmart, so I still haven't gotten them. But <laughs> whenever they do arrive... Uh, I'm excited about the red figures, but yeah. I do think this is cool. Like ten bucks, and it doesn't seem super cheap, which sometimes sub thirty, uh, sub twenty dollar figures can be. Sometimes, at least of what I've seen mm -hmm. from Hasbro, and um, yeah, I think they look cool, especially for kids. Like when Zach got into Optimus Prime uh, a lot, you know, at the time, I was like, let me find him that re-release of the Optim the G1 Optimus Prime, and it was like fifty bucks for that thing. Yeah. Uh, and it was, I don't think that one really hit clearance as hard as some of the other ones did. So anyway, uh, cool that they're, they're putting something there at that lower price point to get kids in, uh, the arachnid, uh, one looks pretty cool. Uh, uh, yeah, the deluxe warpath, um, looks good. Uh, this guy, this, uh, um, yeah. Um, pa paleo tracks. Is that what that thing's called? And it looks like it connects to warpath. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of these ones are connectable. They yeah. they're a weapon system um, that can it's 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 its own character, but it turns into a weapon system. Mm -hmm. And they actually do that in that new Transformer series, where um, there's certain characters that can turn into like a, a shoulder mounted cannon, mm -hmm. and and they'll attach themselves to like RC or mm -hmm. you know Chromia or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and it's 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 super cool that they're integrating that from the from the toys as well yep yeah exactly like being able to do that and pull it in from the other media is great it really is and then yeah the optimus primal looks freaking awesome yeah that, it, it looks so much better than your the, the uh original exactly and that's an expensive figure right from the original ones yeah right? it was it right. was on the secondary market like 50 or 60 bucks mm -hmm. so i mean now it's now it's going to go down to like ten dollars yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it looks fantastic. Even in robot mode, I think uh, Optimus Prime looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I'm psyched about it. Yeah, I'm psyched we're, we're starting to see some other things. Yes, exactly. Um, and in other news on Transformers, and they, I can't believe they didn't announce this, the Combiner Wars Devastator that is extremely popular and super expensive now is getting re-released on Amazon. Oh, wow. That is a big deal. Yep. I can't believe they didn't mention that. They had like three hours. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I think I think this one is great. Uh, packaging looks great. Definitely like straight out of, you know, 97 or whenever Beast Wars uh, was its heyday. Um, but it looks fantastic. And I, I think I definitely want to try and get the Optimus Primal um, and the, um, what do they call Megatron? Is it Megadon? It's, it's just Megatron. Yeah, the Megatron whenever that comes out. Um, and then we had Transformers Prime um, and the vehicles there. Um, any thoughts here? I, I didn't have big feel feelings one way or the um, other. Yeah, I'm not super familiar with Prime. Even in my toy dealing, I I deal very little in Prime stuff. Mm -hmm. um, all I know is that Lenny had talked about that that stuff was previously only available overseas. Um, mm -hmm. So they're re-releasing re it for the U.S. market. It's the first time for us here. And that's all I got. That's all I know about those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't have uh, too many feelings one or the other. They did have some more uh, robot or red, I should say. Um, again, I'm excited to get it in hand. Uh, the, the I got the Optimus Prime and the Megatron, I think. Um, mm -hmm. I went it for pre-order on Walmart, I'm pretty sure. 
so I think they keep getting delayed my pre-order, but whenever it does come in, uh, I'm excited to get it in hand because they do look really, really cool. So I, I, I do think that's a really neat um, uh, line. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. You know, transformers that don't transform, but it's an interesting kind of concept because it's it's happened. You know, they did those action masters. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. but things have changed and these do look a lot better obviously yeah Yeah. and you know the um transformers all is always like a a jack of all trades master of none in terms of the vehicle like usually the vehicles look the best and the robots while they've gotten much better over the years never quite match the cartoon model or whatever yeah um so it's cool i i i really dig uh the red line I, but i haven't had it in hand yet so i can't say uh for sure one way or the other um and then next we got some uh uh smaller bots as well that were announced today i miss these how did i miss these because that's um, like three hours of stuff what is that um cloud burst is that <sighs> I'm trying to think what their names are. The the Autobot clones. I could probably. Need, real quick. We'll need some help from the from the comments. From the people in the chat. Because um, <laughs> I thought that that they've done the Decepticon clones already, um, and I thought that they've done one of these in a an exclusive multi pack. And maybe that's what but they're. I could, be, I could be wrong. Maybe they're just getting them getting them out there to everyone. Maybe, maybe. Um, Hall of Fame, Commander Class Skylinks, which I, those are finally starting to hit uh, target around us, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, knockouts, and then we had Frank Welker and Peter Cullen, which was just really cool. I'm seeing him play it quick right, with the so audio. Can you hear this audio? We're gonna hope that I can. He yep. Make his way to to Cybertron. It's what I've been told. <laughs> it's a rumor, maybe a rumor, well, maybe a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good. sure over the course of this panel, each of you are going to break into some of uh, your famed and favorite character voices, and I'm, I know that's what the the fans will love to to hear from both of you. So as we go, uh, we're going to jump in. We're going to start. We're going to go dial all the way back to the '80s, and we're going to pull up a little. Yeah, well, nobody deserved. more deserving. Yeah, for sure. So how was it working with with Greg and in? in- uh, anyway, uh, it was really cool. <laughs> it was really cool to hear them talk and to hear their voices. Oh, maybe here, maybe I got the end of his other thing here. We will survive. Wow! So cool. He doesn't skip a beat. I mean, it sounds no. It sounds like 1985. Still, um, yeah, he sounds great. And you know, when I saw them today, I was like, oh, they're looking a little old. I'm worried. I'm worried. But they. Yeah, they uh- <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's go to chat and kind of wrap up our thoughts on Transformers here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ross says, I found all the original Beast stores at the first store for a few bucks. Flipped all of them just in time a few months back. Uh, good for you. That's it's the key. Like, when, when are you going to sell? Hold or sell? Uh, I wish uh, we had toy stores for collecting. I know. I, it's You have Think Geek, but that's not really. I mean, the, I think there's only like three of those stores in America. One of them happens to be in Raleigh. Yeah. Uh, uh, which is cool for us, I guess. Uh, Marana, why didn't they show the Studio Series 86? Yeah, I thought that was one of their new big things we talked about in the prediction show, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I th- maybe they're going to save that for the Fan Fridays or Transformers will have a new day, Transformer Tuesday, you know, something. It seems like that's the pattern that they're they're getting into. But the problem of doing it's like every week is just it loses its pizzazz, at least to me, I feel like it's just it kind of and maybe it's just the way the business is that they kind of just have stuff coming in as time goes along and they just have to get to yeah. it. But to me, it was just kind of it's taken away. Like if you would have compacted all of those things that we've gotten in the past six months to just this weekend, it would have been so much bigger. Um, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Some, some of these panels didn't have a lot. Um, and instead of showing them every single week, I feel like it would have been better there. But you know, it's it seems like they can't keep keep in, uh, on top of leaks and stuff like that. So you know, maybe it's just their way of staying ahead of all yeah. the news. So yeah, I think that's one of the biggest problems right now is leaks. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm surprised that nothing from PowerCon got leaked um, mm-hmm. because that used to happen notoriously with 
uh, the Masters Classics figures. Yeah. So maybe, you know, um, it's the factories. Factory workers are just mm-hmm. snapping pictures and putting this stuff out there. Mm-hmm. You know, and it comes out anonymously and then it just, you know, goes from one person to the next to the next. It's social media everywhere. Uh, and maybe it's just too, too much to keep after. Fast lane and yeah. crowd waker. All right. Thank you, Mariano. Amazon exclusives. Um, all right. Final thoughts on Transformers, John. Uh, all good stuff. Everything looked good. Yeah. Um, I don't think any of it will be too difficult to find. Um, Cause the only pulse exclusive was that uh pit of judgment pack. Um, they didn't say anything else was exclusive, right? No, I don't think so. It's all on um, there. I, it may have been sold out by now. Let me double check. But but again, you can find it on on um, Big Bad Toy Store and Entertainment Earth. Yep, yep. And you'll get it quicker than if you bought on Hasbro Pulse anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I paid for the premium membership, and I'm getting my free shipping. <laughs> but everything looked really good. Um, I'm I'm kind of excited for dinosaur stuff. Dinosaur, you know, yeah. they did the they did the the Paleo tracks that Vertebrake character. Yep. I like it. It's good stuff. Dinosaurs always wins. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, th- you're hundred. Uh, Mariano makes. It. I was hoping they show the Titan class Autobot arc. Oh yeah. Well, Transformers Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, w- this was a few weeks ago. We said those leaked images. Mm-hmm. It's either I guess wasn't real, or yeah, these images, or it's still yeah. the helmet. I mean. What better a time to unveil that than Hasbro? Yeah. Maybe maybe it's going to be uh, tied in with the um, the eighty six Studio Series stuff. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe. All or, right. <laughs> uh, sorry, that's going to be another Haslab project. They didn't want to dump two Haslab projects on us in one weekend. Why not? Because there's only so much money, Jay. <laughs> they are the, the, the Razor Crest is already backed. I know, but I think they want to get one thing backed immediately, <laughs> you know, because then they know the tooling's paid for. They can make it. It's all done. Yeah. And then they'll announce the next one. Because it, it seems wow. like there's always more than there's always more than one going. True. Because Cookie Monster was going the same time as the katana, even though Cookie mm. Monster failed. Yep. And then before the Cantana even shipped, uh, Unicron was announced, mm-hmm. and that's that's still in production. Yeah. So now that this the Razor Crest is announced, I think nothing, something else will be out before we know it. Hmm. Yep. All right. Let's go into my most disappointing hour and a half of the day. <laughs> I, you know, I put on this shirt this morning in anticipation. Of uh, of uh, excitement for Ghostbusters, Ross says, "Jay, that RGB shirt is fine. It is. This is actually an eight bit zombie original. Uh, if you haven't checked out eight bit zombie, check him out. Google eight bit zombie. Um, re- like really cool artist. Um, makes a lot like just retro uh, toys and stuff like that. Really, really cool artist. Um." But yes, so we had Ghostbusters and, you know, let me just paint a picture for you, John. Like yesterday, we were a little bit underwhelmed with the Star Mm -hmm. Wars and um, Marvel stuff. Actually, Marvel is pretty good, but definitely underwhelmed with the Star Wars stuff. So like in my mind, I was like, well, Ghostbusters is going to be great because they did such a good job at Toy Fair. Like just really knocked it out of the park at Toy Fair with Kenner Classics, which was like, what? Um, mm-hmm. Plasma series, which that was the one thing I think we kind of expected. Um, the the prop replica, um, Neutrona wand, like so much stuff. So in my mind, I was like, okay, well, the Ghostbusters team, they've got it together. We're gonna, and they've probably been holding stuff back because of Ghostbusters Afterlife. We're gonna have a fun Ghostbusters <laughs> panel. Instead, uh, we got, um, well, let's see. fast forward to it here. Yeah. Oh, the Tenacious D stuff was actually pretty fun. Uh, we got this. We got simulated um, the afterlife. Uh, ghost else? catching. I think I might. Quick. Get out your neutrino. Gear up. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. 
That was that was their first time holding the the wand for each of them ever. <laughs> oh man. Um So <laughs> this is where it's like it's even more sad. So like I had this kind of screen recording on my computer down here in the office, but I was actually watching this on my TV upstairs in our living room. So my wife uh, was, you know, doing her own thing in the background and she was like, oh, my God, this is so dorky. And I was like, I know, God, they're setting us back years, decades. <laughs> it's like, no, it's endearing. I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's not. This is this is bad. <laughs> but, yeah. And you know, I I don't want to hit on them too hard because it's like they're trying to be cool, and they you know maybe they got told we had to hold all this stuff back because the movie's delayed, so we have nothing. We have to fill like an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. But these long extended ghost busting things to do the hashtag proton stream, three uh, of them, three times, three times. I was like, one's enough. This was enough. <laughs> hashtag proton stream. I was like, please. And I went in. I was like, let me just put some hashtags in because we need to stop this right now. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, she's trying to stop it. And he's still he's still going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Shogun 77 says, play the sound effect that encapsulates the GB reveals. Jay, I'll do it right now. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, a big bummer, big bummer. So, but again, I can forgive this. I'm like, okay, this is fine, cute, whatever, whatever. We'll get to the good stuff. But we we never got to the good stuff. Um, we uh, they did this thing that the the totally thing that just took way too long. Um, and then they showed. Oh, here we go. If you want to see some right now, the um, very moment figures with your hands, hands behind them in blurry. They didn't couldn't even get the visuals right. But anyway, so that was that. And then uh, they had Ernie Hudson on who like the whole time I felt bad for Ernie Hudson because he was probably yeah. like, these are the people that I got an interview with. Um, so <laughs> that's cool. Um, and then Mark Br Brudeau was really cool. I thought that was neat. That interview I thought was cool. Um, and then this conversation was that was kind of because then we had him doing the Kenner wax sculpting. And what I thought was interesting here and I, and I can't remember who mentioned the chat earlier um, was talking about, well, does this mean we're going to be getting uh, this? It's a pretty, it's it's become a pretty pricey vintage real Ghostbuster figure, this Fright Features Slimer uh, that has a proton pack. Um, I mean, those things are going for like 300, 400 bucks in some cases. But I took it as he was actually trying to repair a broken like wax casting. But yeah, you know, John, you you do this uh, like, like professionally. It's, 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 but what's it's definitely the, broken. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I was watching him um, after he does the eyes and he's trying to repair under the 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 articulating jaw mm -hmm. and there's a piece that's broken off of there and it looks like it's been broken for a while. Yeah. And I'm guessing it's because if you see the clay that he's dipping into mm -hmm. uh, or the wax that he's dipping into um, with the with the wax pen, that's a different colored um, wax. It's darker because it's it's new. That thing that he's working on is definitely an old cast. Yeah. Or, or they took um, portions of the original one and you can actually make a mold of the plastic version. Um, you can make a silicone mold of it and then heat yeah. the wax up in a crock pot and then pour yeah. the wax in and then you'll get out a, you know, full wax example. Yeah. Um, there you go. Because, There's broken. It's yeah. Broken. If, if, if he was trying to work on the original one from the 80s, mm -hmm. it would probably just crumble. The wax will be it will be in really bad shape. And I got a feeling that's what happened is mm -hmm. he tried to mess with it. Um, Cause you can see under the jaw mm -hmm. <laughs> how it's got sort of broken yeah. off right there where he's trying to yeah. fix it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it seems like they kind of probably pulled it out of a drawer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like some of these parts and pieces, which is kind of cool because you got to see um, some other things here. Like this is from that pull, pull, pull speed ahead ghost. Yeah, it's the um, end of the ripcord, right? Yep. Um, and then you have the original Peter Venkman, which his legs have broken off. And you have a, a kind of two up uh, version of that head sculpt. Um, so it's kind of cool that they have these there, but uh, yeah, uh, that was that was interesting. Um, so there was a lot of like old Kenner level, which I thought was neat. Um, now this, uh, I thought Kevin would be the one that did because he led the Toy Fair panel. I thought he did a really good job at the Toy Fair panel. So again, you know, Bill and Pam, I think they did, they did, they were, it was a noble quest that there's no way they're going to be successful in it. So <laughs> you know, I don't want to hit on you guys too hard. Like, you know, you, you put yourself out there in front of thousands and thousands of people. So please don't feel like I'm picking on you. Um, but I, I do think it's just like, it was a kind of a swing and a miss on a lot of these kind of gimmicks. Um, but I, I, I've actually reached out to Kevin. I found him uh, on LinkedIn or something like to try and come on the show and talk, but he probably mm -hmm. can't talk about this stuff. Uh, Cause he's in the middle of it. But so I thought this was kind of cool to have this broader team. I thought that was neat. Um, so that was cool. Um, and it was neat for in this part where they talk about, cause I have seen this firsthand, the Kenner classics, real ghostbuster figures, those streams and everything. Like my, I gave a set to my son. If you watch my review, those of those figures, I gave a whole set to my youngest Alex who loves ghostbusters. Um, and he has played with these nonstop, not a single beam has broken yet. And it's been, seven months which is like mm -hmm. a record like he and he plays hard with them and somehow those streams are still together so you know they mentioned that in this conversation uh kevin mentioned i believe uh and it's true they actually fixed you know i'm sure eventually they will break i'm sure my son will eventually break them but they've held together a lot longer uh, than they did when i was a kid um so that was kind of cool uh oh here we go Oh, it's so bad. Oh, it's so bad. Put your fan account. Get ready. Fans in the Hashtag chat type. Fans. Don't forget to type in hashtag photon stream to attack. Stay puff. There you go. I'm so sorry, Bill. Help us take you down. All right. So we had another one of those. And, uh, <laughs> and then we get a quick reveal of what they're going to do with Kenner Classics. And uh, could it be Ecto Glow? Could it be a new Ecto One? Nope, it's the Ecto Popper in a new casted color. It's, I mean, it's cool, right? But yeah, it is. It does the vintage one have that much popularity to justify making it again? Nope, <laughs> not at all. Um. Yeah, uh, it's um, again. I actually, I really like this thing. I pre-ordered it on Walmart. Like, it's, mm -hmm. I think it's still up right now. So it's cool, but it's it's almost like a thing that should be an add-on to uh, the whatever else they were going to reveal. But no figures, no yeah. inner like you spent this whole hour talking about how cool it was to bring back these kind of class figures, but no other. No Ecto Glow, no Power Pack Heroes. I mean, again, the the Ecto Glow, Slimed Heroes, and uh, Power Pack Heroes are just reuses of the same mold that they already have. So that's a that's a soft ball, a soft lobbed ball to hit. Um, so again, they may have all these things down the line. They're just they're holding them back because the movie's delayed. But they had to know this was going to kind of be a. a disappointment for yeah. you know, fans that were really excited that they were going to still do some Kenner classic stuff. Um, Adam Smedberg says they kept talking about fright features and then revealed the ecto popper disappointment. Yeah. They kept doing all these things that felt like they were hinting <laughs> about what the reveal was going to be. And I was talking to John throughout all of it. And I'll, I'll pause here because this was kind of cool. This reveal. Um, but uh, you, uh, fright features the ghost, the gooper ghost with the ectoplasm. They kept talking about that. I was like, Oh man, are they mm -hmm. gonna bring back vintage ectoplasm? That would be really cool. Because uh, even, even when they brought Mark Boudreaux on to talk about the sculpting, it was all focused on fright features and the yeah. mechanism. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, Okay, all right, cool. They're gonna do it. Um, <laughs> nope. No, they didn't. They didn't. Um, Hall Music fan, that's an embarrassing announcement. I it kind of was. It kind of was. Uh, 
Um, we need a Hasbro Pulse for a firehouse after the Razor Crest. Um, really hope the fight features Simon get really spaced from the video as they're fixing him. Also, they mentioned Bug Eye twice. Yeah, they kept mentioning Bug Eye Ghost. Yep. I was like, oh, cool. I love the kind of the first kind of new ghost that they made after Stay Puft and Slimer. So Bug Eye Ghost, H2O Ghost, Bat of the Bone Ghost. Um, I love those ghosts. I got them there prominently featured on my show. Um, that, that Those would be great. Nope, didn't get those. Didn't get those. And then, uh, yeah, we uh, they they almost like quickly mention it. At, it was so quick you might have missed it. Let's see if we can hear it. Awesome, but I think it's time to turn this panel over to our friends Kevin. And Here, let's see. There's another one on the on the pack as well. But real simple and so much fun and satisfying. <laughs> So satisfying. This Kenner Classics The Real Ghostbusters Ghost Popper will be available for pre-order starting as early as 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at Walbert.com. Please be patient if reveals are not ready exactly at 5 p.m. So uh, we got this one. It's a Walmart exclusive. No! No, it's, yeah, Walmart exclusive. But thankfully, I think it's still online uh, right now mm -hmm. on it is. the Walmart page. So uh, if you do want to pick one up and pre-order it, but the thing is, like for all of us that pre-ordered the Kenner Classics figures, uh, that was a disaster um, of biblical proportions. Uh, so I feel like a lot of us don't trust the the Walmart pre-orders. Um, Didn't I find them before you got yours? Yeah, I found them in the store. You did. You did. Got a whole set, and the set that I got was the European version, which was cool. I was glad to get them, you know, because it was like, okay, now I you got the non who you gonna call. I got mm -hmm. the the the, uh, the who you gonna call text, and then the other one. So I got all of them, which is cool. I'm excited for that, but still, um, <laughs> Mariana, Bill and Pam are reminding me of Bulk and Skull from Power Rangers. <laughs> 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 I'm sure that would fast forward through. Um. I wonder if they're pro saving proper items for later. They have to be, right? They have to be. Yeah, they got to be saving it for you know a month, month or two leading up to the movie's release. Once, once they're able to put a finalized date on a release, mm -hmm. you know, I think I think that's when they'll start, you know, showing some more stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we got this cool kind of reveal um, from that's Jason right, Reitman, which I thought was really cool. He kind of showed uh, the kind of new Ecto-1 um, from Ghostbusters Afterlife, which is pretty neat. Um, and I, I think it was on Ghostbusters New, they show that, you know, this is this is not, they kind of went and bought a couple other millimeter 59 uh, converted Cadillac hearse ambulance combos, um, which was kind of neat. And then there was this kind of like little bit uh, towards the end where he was like, uh, you know, I got something to reveal uh, to you. And it was so much fun to shoot because we put this crazy new engine in it and we have it doing things that you'd never believe Ecto-1 could do. But today, I'm here to show you something that is equally cool. And it is the Plasma Series Ecto-1. When I was a kid, I was just as big a movie fan as I am today, and all I ever wanted was to get the toy after the movie so I could play with it, but I never had anything like this. The details are extraordinary, down to the license plate, down to the gunner seat. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Uh, Kevin and Chris, do you want to show them the details? A huge thank you to Jason for that. Uh, that was awesome. And So, yeah, so we um, have a Plasma Series Ecto-1, and it does look really cool. Like I, I think it looks neat. Um, but a detail about this uh, Ecto one that I think is uh, missed, and I'm actually gonna pull it up on. Where is it at here? I wanted to pull it up to kind of show the scale. Like I think even as it was revealed, we were talking back and forth um, that it seems small. It's too small to be a. Uh, kind of scaled to the actual plasma series, which is a, which is a six inch scale. Um, and why I wanted to pull it up on the target page is to one show you how it's uh, sold out. Um, so that's great. Uh, but <laughs> you're uh, looking right here. Uh, it says one eighteenth scale uh, when you zoom in uh, right here on uh, the box. Uh, so one eighteenth scale, like would you say that is closer to that's that's a four inch scale? Yeah, yeah four inch scale. So 
do you think that means we're going to get four in scale figures? But I, I feel like that's a bit of a waste, right? Yeah, I think um, it seems like Plasma Series is just their sub brand for more higher quality, higher detailed, mm -hmm. re regardless of scale. Yeah, maybe maybe there will be um, some Plasma Series four inch movie figures, you mm -hmm. know, um, when when we finally get to that. Yeah, but I I'll be surprised because a lot of companies, you know, they're still selling um, four inch high detailed figures for 20 bucks when the regular six inch plasma series is also 20 bucks. So I don't know if people will justify, you know, 20 bucks for a four inch figure when I can get a six inch for the same price. Right. Yeah. I just, I feel 50 bucks. And the amazing is we have so many ectos at this point. Like I, I, my, uh, my wife calling, she was like, don't you already have like, 15 ecto ones and i was like i do and <laughs> with the 118 scale like i have the uh, hot wheels elite uh, 118 scale it looks amazing great detail it was a lot more than 49 bucks um so i don't really i, I again if i find it in retail maybe it'll, they'll clearance it out or something maybe i'll pick that up like i do want it mm -hmm. i wasn't necessarily like uh, I was like, really, it's sold out already. Fine, then I guess the, I, they don't want my money. It's I, I don't need it that bad. Um, but it, it was still a bummer that it sold out so fast. Again, f you bots. Um, but yeah, I, I just go all out. Like, give us the six six inch scale. It's never been done before, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> never done a six inch scale ecto. Ever. No, nope. nope, done it. So to There's... me, like. Should have just done it. I mean, Mattel did the six inch scale Batmobile, the 66 Batmobile. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not out of the question, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it's, um, this is your time to do it. If you're going to do it, do it. A major movie's getting released. Um, and honestly, I don't want the rusted out one. I want the OG one. You know? yeah. <laughs> uh, one but I really think it would be a good seller. You know, a lot of people are into ghostbusters right now, regardless of, uh, the new yeah. movie hype because everything's sort of blown up a little bit when the um, the movies that made us mm -hmm. came out on Netflix yeah. and mm -hmm. that that uh, Ghostbusters um, episode is amazing. Yep. Yep. Um, let's uh, go to the chat here. Uh, Jurassic Dave ninety three. Good to see you, Jurassic Dave. Looks good, but such a weird scale. I wish it was six inch RB, RGB size. Totally agree. Um, all music fan. I have plenty of smaller Ecto One diecast cards. Yeah, there's like so many in 118 uh, style. Um, uh, Sledge One, maybe the plastic is more of a display piece. You might get a nice in scale new mold Ecto One for the Kenner line. Maybe, maybe. And again, we still haven't gotten the Fright Features one. Uh, that one looks great, like as a toy. I think it looks, it looks fantastic. So excited whenever that one comes out. Um, and uh, I do like the look of the new Ecto One and the jump seat reminds me of the Turtle Wagon. Again, yeah, I think that's really yeah. cool. Uh, again, I want it. I just feel like it's a bit of a miss. It's a missed opportunity to really um, set the collector world on fire. Um, if you would have went this is, again, I'm sure it'll be expensive, but 49 bucks, like add a hundred dollars to it. And I bet you it would sell. Uh, I bet you you, you think it would be an extra hundred. I think it would be around a hundred. Maybe. Yeah. Um, you're right. Cause it's a major retail release, but after the razor crest, 350 bucks, I'm like, well, maybe it's 150. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the price of things anymore. Uh, it's nice, Jay won't uh, lie, but I will only buy the Kenner stuff. I, I don't blame you. I love I love the Kenner stuff. Clearly, Ken, uh, Hasbro does too because they spent so much time talking about it. And they gave us the uh, the Ecto Popper. Um, <laughs> so my playable Ecto is almost a foot long. That thing is only 15, uh, definitely not six scale. Um, yeah, I don't think the Ectos are only 15. I think they're like 42 bucks for the Playmobil one. Uh, I want all the real Ghostbusters figures in the line. Um, Mattel did a pre-order for a 6 Echo, but didn't make enough pre-orders to come out with it. Yeah, but I feel like that Maddie Collector one, and again, we're going to have uh, uh, Toy Guru, Scott Knightlick on next week, Sunday, yeah. 9 o'clock. Um, it was, he was still in charge of things back then. I'll be curious to ask him, like, really? Like, were you, did you really, did you really have one? Yeah. Were you really trying that hard? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they didn't. But anyway, uh, uh, let's see. 
uh, uh, whole scum as a whole was a miss for me. A few things I like, but not a ton. Uh, we'll give our final thoughts in a second here. Uh, everything sells now. Uh, Razor Crest and Sentinel have totally opened the door to everything. Again, maybe they'll do a, a, a whatchamacallit, HasLab version. I'd love yeah. to see a HasLab version. Really detailed, uh, you know, a gurney with the proton packs on it. Absolutely. Let's do it. I'm in. I will back that in a second. Millisecond. <laughs> All right. So, uh, John, final thoughts on Ghostbusters. They tried. <laughs> you know, I think uh, be, I, I think their biggest problem is the the unforeseen date of the movie. And okay, they they yeah. said we'll have a Ghostbusters panel. We need to fill it with something. We'll, we'll you know kind of play it by ear. But we only have a ghost popper and you know the sector one to show. So stretch it out as much as you can. Throw a fake ghost float in front of the screen. Play with your wands. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I think I think if it, let's say the movie was coming out, you know, um, Christmas. Mm -hmm. I think the Ghostbusters panel today would have been ten times better. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I I do think this was a case of because again we haven't even gotten. The fright feature stuff like there's so much good stuff and again mm -hmm. i have to get my hands on those figures they're awesome and that ecto-1 looks awesome and we still haven't gotten those in retail yet so yep. yeah I, I do think the the date absolutely hampered them and helped and made them hold back but my feedback to hasbro is uh less of the whatever that was <laughs> 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 I don't blame you for not having a lot of stuff, yeah. but you didn't have to do that. I think they did the best with what they, you know, what they had in front of them. Yeah, as, for, sure. You know. for sure. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. All right. Uh, last but not least is the Go Go Power Rangers uh, stuffs. Uh, so let's let's go to there. Um, where where are you at? There it is. Okay. Uh, which closed out the show. Uh, let's see. There she is. And this was kind of, honestly, I think we talked about it in our, in our prediction show, mm -hmm. but it was kind of this discussion around, you know, uh, does Bandai own the rights to a lot of this vintage type stuff? So they won't be able to do vintage figures really. Um, because I would assume Bandai owns a lot of that IP, I would think, but apparently not. Because they have this upcoming retro line that they announced today, uh, mm -hmm. which has head flippers. It's it's definitely new. It's not the same as the Bandai ones. Um, but it absolutely has the feel and everything of the Bandai uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers head flippers. Yeah. Uh, but what are your thoughts there? I thought that was kind of that was kind of a shocker to me. Yeah, me too. Um, because we got head flip figures from the um whatever that uh, retro line was from Bandai, you know, mm -hmm. within the last five years, you know, where it was like the carded figure, but yeah. it was in a window box. Yep. And uh, like, I get it, you know, um, Hasbro gets to take their chance and see what they can do with it because yeah. those figures are still popular, you know, with, yeah. with um, vintage collectors. Yeah. So I think it's, it's Hasbro saying, you know, let's, let's just give it a try. We have different, you know, face sculpting tech. Now we have different, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh articulation tech and this flip head thing is relatively still the same the way that it works yeah um i think they said that this one will keep going around by itself mm -hmm. where you know it's like i don't know it's like a centrifugal force or something until you stop it that thing yeah. will just keep rotating it's like <laughs> head. yeah uh, but i think i think it's cool yeah i think it's a little too bulky in the middle like at least the Bandai ones, I think, were taller, so it kind of proportionally looked better. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do like they added new articulation to it. And again, the, the flip heads are such like an iconic part of the the 90s, you know, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers line. So, you know, it's kind of cool they're going after it. Um, but again, it is a Walmart exclusive. <laughs> um, but that being said, it feels like one with Motu Origins as well as... Uh, Kenner classics, you know, eventually they do show up and they're, they are available to a certain degree. Maybe yeah. not as good as we'd want them to be, but they are showing up. So, you know, I, I feel like give them a chance here. Just have to be patient. 
But again, the box art is straight out of those OG uh, Bandai ones. So I absolutely guess Power Rangers just holds on to all of that and they can do whatever they want. Screw Bandai, but no <laughs> Yellow Ranger, no Trini. What the heck? Man? Yeah, I What's don't know because they're doing the um, the face sculpt likeness. Mm -hmm. So they have to get the rights. Yep. Um, maybe there's a problem there. Maybe. Um, isn't, know, is, is, it, is she the one that passed away? Yeah, she's the one that died, but they did the lightning collection one. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they just said, no, we don't want to do another flip head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Four is enough or five. Yeah. Or five. yeah. Um, okay. This one, you get a, a gold star because this, I think, was your one of your main prediction for power. Yep. Yep. Um, was the uh, uh, Power Rangers Zeo Megazord uh, as the first Lightning Collection uh, Zord? Um, so yeah, what are your thoughts here uh, with that unveiling uh, today? I, I think it looks really cool. Um, this is one of my favorite Megazords, um, mm -hmm. even though I kind of I hadn't been watching it at sure. that point. Um, but anytime I come across this Megazord in a collection that I buy. Like mm -hmm. it's always one of my favorites, especially if it's complete with that bull helmet because mm -hmm. the, the horns are always missing out of that helmet. Yeah. Um, but it's awesome because when you convert it to the individual Zord modes, yeah, it, it's cool because the, um, the two blue tanks, which are the legs, they each have the gunner heads, which, um, they have ropes that come out of them. They, it works like, like, um, tow cables mm -hmm. and they attach to the bull. Um, and it, it's just a super cool Megazord. I love the, the, the Sphinx head. I love everything mm -hmm. about this one. Yeah. And getting this out there with such good articulation, because the other, yeah. the, the, the original articulation, there isn't any, they're, they're just, <laughs> it's, it's two points. It's the, the shoulders are the only articulation pretty much other than the, the claws on the hands. Mm -hmm. So I think getting this, um, in the line finally is is going to open so many doors um, for Hasbro doing Megazords. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, and seeing this in this guy's hand, it looks, the articulation to your point looks fantastic. Um, it's kind of something that uh, Playmates did with their uh, old school version of Ultron, where the articulation right. is really good. Um, it's nice and hefty. But again, it's a good size. And it's not that expensive. I think on Hasbro Pulse right now, I think it's only 65 bucks or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because I, I looked at it at Big Bad and it was like sixty nine ninety nine. Yeah, so it's not bad. No, that's great. That's fantastic. Because people are paying like one twenty five for the vintage one complete. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um. So I I think that's it's a great great first foray. To your point, they are doing something that's like fan demand is there. It's not another you know uh, original Megazord. I, I I think it's I think it's a really good. It's obviously, they were in tune with what the fans were looking for, mm -hmm. which is really cool when that happens. Um, so that's that's awesome. Um, and then uh, we're looks like we're getting a King Sphinx, which was always a favorite of mine as a kid. Um, which is dope. Uh, we're also getting Pumpkin Rapper. Uh, I mean, the monsters are so great. Uh, so it's great we're getting more of these in the Lightning Collection. Um, the had a Dino uh, Thunder Red Ranger, uh, which is upright. Maybe it's sold out already. I don't know. I didn't pick it up because, uh, again, I'm, I'm all Mighty Morphin all the time. Uh, and we have a Mighty Morphin Green Ranger with a bandana Tommy. I did pre-order this one. Was really pumped um, that we're getting a uh, Lightning Collection Green Ranger. So all about that. Uh, so really now I just got to find a pink, yellow, and blue, and then I'll, I've completed the set. And then we have the Lord Zed version of uh, the uh, putty, which I did not get. I'll probably just get, I would rather have the Rita. Uh, yeah, version, me too. Uh, which I think two-pack is still up. And then we have the Metallic Pink Ranger, which I, did I miss this part? Who's this chick as the pink Cat. Ranger? Did I miss that? I, I left after, I was Amy Joe Johnson stand all the way, so there's anybody else I was out. Um, that's, uh, I think that's Cat. Mm -hmm. Um, so isn't that from the, the Rangers that replaced the Mighty Morphin, um, from the movie forward, but no, but Kimberly or, uh, Kimberly was still in the movie. She was also still in by turbo power Rangers turbo she really? been around for a while. Yeah. Her and Tommy, man, we'll have to get a comment, comment help on this one. Yeah. 
Um, and then this one has not been released yet, but this uh, White Ranger, um, which we've already gotten before. They said this is going to be very limited quantities um, target as well. Okay. But when they, they mentioned um, this will be super limited. Okay. So that will probably sell out in 0. 0.1 seconds. <laughs> 0. 0. 0. 0.0001 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had this cool kind of Q&A, which was neat. And then that kind of wrapped it up. And then actually the Fallout Boy little acoustic set was pretty good. Uh, but they were very adamant about not sharing that. Uh, but also having the black nerd Andre Meadows uh, uh, moderate the panel was great. Um, I wish they did that with some of the other panels instead of having uh, staffers do it, like mm -hmm. bring in other like like how uh, Pixel Dan did the PowerCon stuff. It was great having someone like that be the right. moderator you want. And it's something they do really well at San Diego Comic Con where you have a fan or somebody that's good at moderating be the moderator. Um, and then have the staff be the people that are called upon. I think uh, the, the the having someone like the Black Nerd there to lead that panel is actually a really fun panel, yeah. um, which is it, it's an important thing. I lead a panel at San Diego Comic Con every year for Lost, and it there it is uh, it is its own art form leading a panel. So I, I'm glad they did it there for Power Rangers, but hopefully you know again a bit of like learns for next time. Bring in more people that are like fans or, you know, influence or just impress people, whomever that are big fans of it to be the moderators that aren't that don't work for Hasbro that are good at like being entertaining and engaging and moving a conversation along. I think mm -hmm. make it more uh, engaging because I I'm never going to beat on people like Pam and Bill too much where, you know, they're they work for Hasbro like this is not. Their job isn't to be an entertaining streamer, you right. know? Yeah, they're, um, they're not, they're literally design and marketing, but not that yeah. type of marketing. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you get lucky uh, w with like a toy guru or, or, you know, I think even Kev, like there's a few that, yeah, they're just natural kind of people mm -hmm. do it. But yeah, I think, you know, let the moderators be somebody that's not an internal Hasbro employee. Right. That's my opinion two cents there uh but for power rangers what do you think um i think it's all good stuff um i yeah. think it was question again questionable when that line was was announced that hasbro got the license yeah um, but i think now that they're going to start taking over some mega megazord designs from mm -hmm. early series yeah it i think it'll really take off for them yeah well my only um i think their biggest miss which was also bandai's biggest miss mm -hmm. is you know, every Megazord is always like 10 inches, 12 inches tall. Mm -hmm. And if you watch the show, the Megazords are there in the show to, to battle the monsters when the monsters upsize themselves, yep. you know, because initially they're, you know, regular, you know, yep. fighting the Rangers. Mm -hmm. So when you have all these Megazords on your shelf, mm -hmm. like it's just the Megazords, there should be an equivalent size monster to go along with that. Oh, I've, yeah. I have felt like that. I felt like that <laughs> for years. Uh huh. Um, that you always see shelves of Megazords. Where yeah. Are the, where are, even if it's like a a, a vinyl jumbo figure, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be super articulated. Yeah. Um. You know, even a five point vinyl mm -hmm. figure. Yep. Um. Of you know they did the eight inch um Mighty Morphin uh bad guys. You know yeah. you can get an eight inch King Sphinx or eight inch Goldar. Mm -hmm. Um. But there's no good equivalent for your megazords yeah yeah no that's a great that's a great call out um yeah i think that's a that would be awesome it's it's such a missed opportunity like what <laughs> has nobody yeah, bro, thought of, has gonna... nobody thought of this yet have the, do they I watch the show <laughs> I, I, I was a big fan of mmpr back in the day and i probably thought it but i haven't thought about it in a long time and that's a great that's a great great idea mm -hmm. why haven't yet and and i mean i i think it's awesome they're doing this monster series where they're doing king sphinx and the the pumpkin wrapper mm -hmm. um and they said they're they will be a little bit bigger they're over seven inches tall so they'll scale mm -hmm. well with the the figures yeah but okay here's a foot tall megazord and he has nobody to battle he can you know he can battle your godzilla figure that you just bought from <laughs> from bandai or, pl or playmates yeah. now <laughs> True. No, I think it's a great idea. Uh, Mariano says it was a bit of a letdown. The flip heads and metal pink ranger were the only things I didn't really already know about. That's fair. That's fair. Um, 
But overall, maybe because I'm not a diehard, I was like, it looks pretty good. Again, the diehard Ghostbuster fan, I was like, Meh. I was like, look at what Power Rangers has. Look, look at what GI Joe has. Look, at what, <laughs> look at what Transformers has. But um, but yeah, uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, here we go. Mark forty four prime. I totally agree. Been saying it for years, but monsters, please finally get King Sphinx. Now make him grow. Exactly. Yeah, a, that's a no brainer, especially in this post, um, you know, kaiju obsessed world. That's a no brainer. Yep. Absolute no brainer. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, ten e twenty three. A tool says, "Hey, Jay and John, please bring and show your favorite figure. Any figures, show it, please." Um, my favorite right now, and again, I, I think I showed it already in this episode, but uh, right now is my scare glow, Motu Origin scare glow. Oh boy, uh, is yeah, my I have nothing in front of me. My uh, mo most of my toys aren't even in this room with me. Um, yeah, one of these days we're actually have to show your actual <laughs> toy room. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, m mine right now is my oh. scare glow. Um, so here he is. Uh, he looks great putting my hand behind here so that you can see all the detail. Um, but no, I, I really, I'm really digging the scare glow figure. Um, it's my most recent fave. Uh, okay. I see what yours is. That's a dope one. Yep. The devastator from McFarlane DC dark Knights. It's, it's ridiculous. I agree. I think it looks incredible. For twenty bucks, and I think you got it for fifteen. I got bucks. it for fifteen because they hadn't fixed the clearance off of Wonder Woman figures. Unreal, <laughs> unreal that you got that for fifteen bucks. Hasbro to charge you seventy five dollars for that figure. Yep. Um. So yeah, definitely this. But honestly, the most recent, it's not a figure, but oh, I am in love with this Neutrona wand. It is like I had the Maddie collector. I sold it when I heard this thing was going to be coming out. Or I saw it was coming out, so I, I made my money and ran. Um, <laughs> and now I'm seeing a bunch of people like list their Maddie Collector ones, and they're not selling um, because. And I think it's because this thing is just absolutely fantastic. I guess it's different. It has the the wood handle here, and it has this kind of little taped handle here. But honestly, it's really comfortable with those additions. So Spangler knew what he was talking about. But I, this thing is just so freaking cool. Um, kudos, kudos to that team. Uh, all right. Um, that's it. That's all we got for today. Holy moly. A lot of stuff. An hour and 26 minutes. Uh, let's kind of close out the chat here. Uh, Power Rangers. Uh, oh, I already did that. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Tool says, whoa, 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 wow. I'm, I'm guessing that's in relation to uh, John's uh, figure. That's so cool. That dis That's a destroyer. Keep him safe. <laughs> <laughs> Mariano says this devastator equals impressive indeed indeed all right so price yeah uh again john got it for 15 dollars yep he's coming down on ebay finally in price though he's, he's getting closer to like 40 bucks that you can pick him up for on, okay. on the aftermarket um so you're telling me there's a chance um <laughs> we got to use it tonight <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to put in more little sound bites that we kind of share on the show. Um, and I added that one and I was like, there's not really going to be anything to talk about for that today, but I found it. I found one to put in there. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that will do it for this episode of Toy Geeks. Uh, it was a lot of fun, a fun two nights here uh, for this show. Uh, a lot of fun to kind of talk about the Hasbro Pulse Con. And while it wasn't a knockout success, in my opinion, and I think John's as well, it was still really cool that Hasbro put it on. Anything to kind of share in, in uh, the splendor of action figure and toy collecting uh, was great. Uh, the concerts were great. And, you know, hopefully, this is just this is the first one. Day one of Disneyland was a disaster. So, uh, you know, as things go on, uh, hopefully uh, it'll become cooler and cooler. So, uh, again, next week, October 4th, Sunday, nine o'clock be there or be square we got our first ever guest scott Knightlick, aka toy guru is coming on the show uh so definitely be there um to john and i will be asking questions but we want you to ask questions as well we'll, we'll, we'll plus in uh your comments as long as they're respectful and yeah keep, keep keep them respectful keep them clean yeah. we we treat our guests with respect even if you don't like or don't agree with them we treat them with respect so i will 
I will ban you. I will. Just be nice. We're all cool here. We got. Yeah, pretty- we just won't ask your question. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but I, I'm thankful for the toy geeks, uh, fans, or viewers, or friends. Uh, we don't really have any a holes in the bunch, so you know, uh, I don't. I'm not worried about that. But anyways, uh, Mariano, thank you for another fun show. Good night. Good night, Mariano. Good night, Mariano. Good night. Hardline. Soul. Hardline. Um, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Hasta luego. And goodbye.